Today, I sat down with Jess. She talked about not wanting children and she was formally married and they realized probably about five years in that they should go their separate ways because one of them wanted children and the other one didn't. And I think this story is becoming more common and I wanted to, you know, give the platform to those people because especially with the planet as well, the best thing we can do is have fewer kids or no kids at all. But also from, you know, uh, a mental health point of view, if children are something that you don't want, um, you're not alone. And according to Jess, probably about 25% of the population of our generation, um, that's the I was going to say baby boomer. I'm definitely not baby boomer. <laughs> the millennial generation aren't wanting kids. So you're not alone out there. And if you are wanting kids and you're with someone who doesn't, this is definitely just a good one to tune into and get uh, that perspective. Okay. Enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome, Jess. My Thank good, you. Good name. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Where are you based right now? Uh, I'm in London. So I'm in East London. Um, yeah. Okay. Nice. I'm just South of the river. So, uh, okay. we're not too far away. No, but we obviously have our rivalry. So of course, yes, we should do a break <laughs> dance right now. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to have you on today. Um, before we jump in and get started, it'd be great to hear a little bit more about who you are yeah, so my name is Jessica Dante. Um, I am, uh, my, my profession is that I have a YouTube channel that shows people how to visit London like they live here. Um, and on that YouTube channel, I also talk about moving to London and what it's like living here. Um, and that's actually my business that I work on. So we're on other social media channels and we basically, yeah, we help tourists and people moving to London to have a great time when they come here. Um, and uh, my story and where I, I'm coming into this episode is when I, um, I'm American, I'm from New York, and I moved over to England about eight and a half years ago because I um, ended up being, I was married to somebody who is English, and uh, we got married when I was 23, and um, at then as we got older, we both kind of uh, weren't really sure about the whole kids thing. And then at the end of the day, I realized that um, I didn't want to have children. So, and he, he realized that he did. So that ended up, um, we, it ended our marriage. And um, yeah, so it was a very defining life moment for me. And so now I sometimes go on the internet and talk about what it's like to not want to have children. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I actually didn't know that, by the way, about your tour, your, your profession, I feel like I live in London and I could still use these tips. So I'm Well, that's always the biggest compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. Oh, well, Jess, I'm really excited to have you on today. And I guess we'll start off with the question of, you know, you've told us a little bit about what ended your marriage. Was this a conversation that you guys had before you got married? And how long did it take once you guys were married to have that discussion and realization for you? Yeah. Everyone always asks me that because I think a lot of people are worried that like something similar might happen to them, which it, you know, obviously people grow and change. So you never, you never know, but, um, that's always, everyone's curious about that, but we got married when we were 23 because, um, for me to be able for us to be together, basically we, I had to get a visa. So we got married pretty quickly. We were very young. Um, and our first couple of years together, we both, actually really our first like four years together, we both really weren't that keen on children. Um, neither of us were like, just loved them in general. Um, and so we kind of, we talked about very, very generally and not very often. We talked about our future plans and how they would involve having children. Um, but it was very like top line, um, no like specific plans. And for me, I didn't, I wasn't really that keen on it, but I, I just, I felt like, because I now know that society, especially for women puts this on us, but I felt like I would get into my late twenties and then I would 
feel more like, oh, okay, I can envision having a family, even if it wasn't right at the end of my twenties, maybe a bit later, but I could envision that in my future. And I would feel more of like the urge to do that. Um, when actually, uh, it went the opposite direction for me. I, I felt more strongly that I did not want to have them. So then, um, this was about like five years into our marriage is when we started having serious conversations about it. Cause we had, um, friends that were having children and we were around children more. And, um, for me, it was something that was kind of irking at me a lot. And, um, so yeah, we had about like six months of talking about it and also giving each other time to think about it before we made any major decisions. Um, and then after the six months is when I, I decided like, I'm not going to change my mind. And so we need to figure out what we're going to do. Yeah. I think it's so true. And I think you and I were speaking about this before our, this meeting, how, I think it was three years ago you said that this, you made a decision. Back then you feel like there, you said there was less information out there. There was less people and women saying, I don't want children. How did that make you feel? Uh, I, I felt quite alone um, in it because I didn't, I also didn't really have, I had one or two friends. I had one friend that felt similar to me. And then basically the rest of my friend group at that time couldn't really relate. And a lot of people obviously wanted to support me and try to be able to understand, but, um, it did feel very lonely. Um, and I had a little blip where I felt a little bit broken. Um, and that was only just because I was going through such a, like an intense grieving process. Um, so, uh, you know, your brain obviously is just trying to do anything to make you feel better or to like try to rationalize what's going on. So it was a very short period. And then I quickly realized, no, that's, that's not how this is going. <laughs> that's not how this works. Um, especially because actually the passive decision is to not have children. The active decision is to have children. So, um, yeah. And I was just trying to, um, in like my lower points and trying to like understand this whole situation. And before, you know, my ex and I decided to part ways, um, I was doing like a lot of research and trying to find YouTube videos about women talking about not having children and articles and anything I could find. Um, and there wasn't that much out there. I did find a couple of YouTube videos of, um, kind of like this, like longer podcasts of people talking about it, both men and women. And, um, that was kind of helpful because I did hear people saying similar thoughts to what I had. Um, and I also, I read a couple of articles, I think they were both on refinery 29, actually that talked about, um, they're quite vulnerable articles where people who were children of parents who did not want to have children how they were saying that um even the ones that grew up in you know loving homes despite that they still always like it actually really affected them still um in various different ways and for me i was like i just don't want to put a child through that i i think I could probably be a decent mom, but I, I don't want to put that pressure and that like project any of that onto a child because that's not their choice. So I would rather that it was me taking on, you know, the grief and the pain of that decision, um, which I don't have now, but yeah. So yeah, there's, um, I'm seeing more and more though, uh, information like podcast talking about it videos, even stuff on TikTok. I saw somebody, um, one of the influencers I follow on Instagram today posting this um, really great, um, she posted something about it. And then like people were chiming in about how they felt and everything. So it is definitely coming to the forefront more, which is good. Yeah, it definitely is. Especially I think for a lot of people, you know, I remember David Attenborough in his uh, last movie was like, don't have kids, everybody. That's the best thing you can do for the planet. And it's true. And I think a lot of people are thinking, what kind of world do I want to bring children into? What was, what is it for you that makes you not want kids? If you're comfortable sharing that? Yeah. Um, so 
there that is one of the things is um i'm very environmentally conscious and i don't really know if we're gonna have a planet for these children to grow old onto so that was one of the things um but the biggest driver for me is that i really value freedom of choice and just freedom to do what i want to do basically. So, um, that's just like a re reoccurring thing and theme in my life. That's why I work for myself. Um, I'm happy to take on the stresses of being self-employed. If it means that I can don't have to ask somebody to go have lunch with a friend on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I was, I went through, I went to my therapist in the lead up of like trying to figure all of this out. I went to her quite a lot and she had me do this exercise of, when you look at your life with children and then you look at it without children, how do you envision both of them? And like what words come up and, and what do you, what do you think of? What do you see it as? And the, the one with children will, to me, and this is not saying that children are this in general, but just in my perspective, children in my life meant a life of restriction, a life of making decisions for a lot of others, but not for myself. Um, and a lot of struggle, financial struggle, things like that. But then my life that I envisioned where I didn't have children meant a life of travel and a life where I don't have as much financial stress and I plan my own schedule. I don't have to take, I can do whatever I want on a weekend. Um, and I think I, I just didn't, that's, I think, a pretty big thing. Um, but then also there's plenty of people who are happy knowing that, happy to have children anyway and happy to like make those sacrifices for their life, which is great. But I just was not even anywhere near close to being prepared to do any of that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the way you say it, I, I'm like, maybe I don't want kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so true. And I think it's so wonderful that you've thought about it to the point where it, it is so it's selfless in a way, because you could, the easy route would have just been like to stay with your partner, to have those kids. But like you mentioned in those articles that children wrote about the impact it had knowing that, you know, they weren't wanted. Can you share what that impact was? They had a mix of people. So some of the people they had, um, parents who they were like, um, a happy quote unquote, happy accident. Um, so they had parents that still, um, tried to give them as much as possible and, you know, did in the like did love them. Um, and then they also had children who they would have, they were, um, they had like maybe a dad that ended up just really not being that present. Um, or when they saw each other, it was like twice a year. Obviously I wouldn't envision that that's what I would ever do, but, um, I think one of the women, she said, she just kind of always felt something from her mom that she just kind of had this feeling that there was something there, even though her mom always did the best she could and provided her with as much as she could and, and did, and did show love, but she just kind of always, she kind of had this feeling that there was something else that her mom was missing and that she was the reason that she didn't have that. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure what that's what she had said, which I thought was really interesting because, you know, it's th that stuff has a huge effect on children. And then as they get into adults and it can, it can really affect how a person lives their life. And even when you're trying to do the best that you can, um, that can still happen. So yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. I wonder how many people out there are kids of adults who didn't want them like children in general that would be really interesting I wonder how many like what the percentage of the population of adults is that actually don't want children or, or even if we just looked at maybe our generation because I think it's different for every generation as well yes definitely do you have um, any I, kind of age yeah I think the more most recent stat that, that I've read was our generation um 25 percent of people for sure do not want to have children like no off the bat what? Yeah. That is yeah, high. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's the highest it's ever been. Um, and it's pretty significant, but also that doesn't even count the people that probably at this moment, like you can get into your thirties and, and even for women can still be ambivalent. Obviously women, um, have 
like there are time constraints, but, um, if you want to have biological children, but yeah, it's so there's also a huge, there must be a huge amount of people who are in the gray area. And I, I meet loads of people that when I tell them my story that they're like, you know, I just feel like I could take it or leave it. Um, and you know, things can change obviously, but, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the highest it's ever been. And, um, I've read a lot of it is people have it worrying about the environmental impact. I guess it's a good thing to be honest. I mean, we do have a population crisis going on as well. On top we truly really. do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing too, is, you know, our generation, we can't afford to buy houses. If we live in major cities, we are not getting the salaries that are the generations below us did. So we're like, just kind of, we're, we're struggling and we're seeing that. I think we're seeing that it's way harder for our generation than it was for previous ones. So I imagine a lot of people are like, well, how is it going to be for the next generation? If we're already struggling, you know, we're going to be renting for how long because we can't afford the deposit because salaries haven't kept up with house prices and this and that. So I think that's all coming into play. I think it's good. It's great because people are just being more intentional. And I think a lot of that is we have power over our bodies now with birth control as well. Um, That definitely plays a big factor. I guess one thing that'd be interesting to know for you is how has like your family, I know you said a bit about your friends trying to be supportive. How has your family reacted? And do you have any siblings? Yeah. So I have one sister who um, she, my entire family has been really supportive. I think they, they weren't, surprised I think because I've just always kind of done stuff that was not quite the status quo so um you know I I had a couple of like a couple of them just be like oh and I actually had a couple friends who said like when I told them what was going on they'd be like you know like Jess I think you'd make a really great mom and I'm like I don't want to be one. (laughs) It's like not the right thing to say. (laughs) It's not the right thing to say. It's not. I think people, um, it's a lot of times people don't know what to say. Uh, so they like come out with that one and, and I'm like, I don't, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, I would be a lot of great things, but it doesn't mean that that's the path that I should take in life. Yeah. Also, they're trying to be like really like emotionally woke and they're like, I bet it's because she thinks she's not going to be a good mother. So I'm going to tell her she will be. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Also like, do you know me? Cause maybe I wouldn't be a great mom. I'm not, I don't know. I just feel like I'm really selfish for it. So, (laughs) but like being, I, I hate the word selfish. It's just self-interest. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you shouldn't have to justify that for, for like for one minute of the day. So for you, like, what kind of reaction have you gotten? Have you, have you found people are like, yes, like same here. So it took me a while, um, to decide to talk about it. I say publicly. So, um, basically I went through with my YouTube channel, I went through 2019. That's when like, that was the year like that my divorce was going on. And, um, I never really shared too much too much personal stuff on my YouTube channel, but a lot of people knew that the way that I was living in the UK was through my husband and they knew that I was married. Um, but I basically got to, I think I did like, I never mentioned the divorce basically, um, for almost, I guess it was two years because I, the first time that I publicly talked about it, on my social media channels was, um, I was on my friend Hannah Witten's podcast called doing it. Um, and she talks about sex and relationships and she always has really great guests on. And, um, so I had said to her like, Oh, I think I'm ready to talk about, uh, like divorce and not wanting children if you would be open to having me. So that was the first foray into, um, talking about it. And, I thought podcast was good. As you know, it's like a YouTube video is very, the comments are just, I wasn't quite ready for the very immediate comments to come from it. So podcast is harder for people to like immediately comment. So, but I, I shared it and I got so many messages on my Instagram from my followers and people who had never heard of me before, who also sought me out saying they were either in a similar position. They didn't want to have children. Um, some people had said they were in the middle of a relationship that was about 
they thought was about to end because they didn't want to have children and they were thankful to hear my story. Um, there were some people who said they had gone through the same thing and they ended a relationship or a marriage because of the same. And also loads of people who were, um, you know, fifties and sixties, seventies being like, just so you know, everyone told me I would regret it and I don't. So still having a great time. Um, so the reaction was incredible. And then I mustered up the courage to, in Ju the July of this year, make a, it was basically like a 25 minute YouTube video explaining how I was no longer married and also the decision not to have children. And then I went into some other things and, um, that reaction has been mostly great. It's one of my most popular videos, even though it's really long. Um, but then of course there's always the occasional YouTube troll where somebody comes in and says, you'll regret that. Or, um, you like saying something that I wasted my ex-husband's time. Um, and it's all in the name of equality and, you know, which, Sometimes I re respond to them because I'm only human, but a lot of them I just delete. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Wait, like, what does it even mean about equality? Like, what? what? Where's that from? I mean, this was probably a, a Neanderthal of, of, let's face it, a man. But um, I think it was <laughs> like, it was like, oh, you just don't want to have children because you you're a, you think you're a feminist and that will make you equal. And I was like, oh, you have. Oh, I don't even know how you're functioning in society right now, but <laughs> I don't, I, I always want to know what these, like who these people are. So for you, you're now feeling like you're so confident with your decision. Um, is there any like advice that you have for people who are considering not having children and feeling like quite anxious? Maybe like you were in like a relationship, maybe thinking, should I do it for them? What advice would you say? Um, I would say, try to seek out people, uh, especially if you're a woman who doesn't want to have children, um, try to find other women who are in the same position and have like officially made their decision because it helps to talk through the thought processes. Um, one of my closest friends, she had already like made the decision quite a long time ago. And as I was going through it, she kind of was just saying all of her, thoughts about it to me. And it felt like she was in my head because she was just saying so many of the things that I thought and it just validated those reasons and made me feel a lot more comfortable with them and be like, okay, I'm not the only one that feels this way. This makes sense. So like I said before, it can be lonely if you don't have that. So even if you can find like a Facebook group of other people who feel the same way, um, I'm sure men, that's really helpful too. But ooh, I mean, we have to be honest, the pressure on women is obviously a lot different than for men. Um, and um, I would also say, I honestly, that exercise I said, where I looked to the future and I thought about how my life would look in both scenarios and which one I felt more comfortable in. That was really helpful. Um, if you're able to do some therapy time that can help as well. Um, obviously that's, um, if you have the privilege of being able to pay for that, it's something that you do have to be really honest with your partner. If you are feeling a certain way, I mean, obviously it was very scary for me to start bringing this topic up. Um, especially as the conversations got more and more serious. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to stick to what is going to feel best for you because I think it's the, the pain that you could inflict on a child that has not asked for this is in my opinion, just, I never wanted that. I would much rather that I was the one that was suffering the pain than, a child, which then I also have to take care of for the rest of my life, um, for them to have to feel anything because I was too afraid to stand my ground, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's tough. It's a really tough one. Yeah. I think that's really good advice because, um, I actually know quite a few people in this position and I just think it's really important to hear someone who's on the other side of it, because I think it's quite scary if you're in a relationship that you want to stay in. Um, it's easy if you're like not in a relationship and you're like, well, this is just my decision because it's mine alone. Yeah. 
Um, what for, for you, is that when you start, have you been, do you have you been dating anyone? Is that something that you say to people like right off the get go? So it's, I have dated since my separation and my divorce. Um, and I had one long-term, uh, relationship for a year and a half. And now I'm kind of back in like the casual, not casual, but dating <laughs> you to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay too. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the early stages of all the dating and all that stuff. So, um, I will have to say of all the downfalls that hinge has, um, one of the things that is good is you do put on your profile. You can put, don't want children. Um, which I have, I have to say, I've never seen anyone, any man put that on their profile. And I have had a couple of instances where it's been looked over. And I've also had someone who messaged me being like, is that concrete? And I was like, we've not even met up yet. And I was like, You're- stop being so obsessed with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, so I, I responded. So are you asking me if I think that you will be able to change my mind about bearing your offspring? I was like, I'm <laughs> Eddie responded. It was weird. Um, so that, <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Cause then at least if you get like a few dates in, you can kind of be like, Oh, it's, it is on there just so you know. So, um, you would hope that somebody would like take that into account. Doesn't always mm-hmm. happen, but, um, but it, for me in the past, it's come up fairly early because I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. I, it's not, no man will be changing. I will not love someone enough to change that. It's just something you just cannot compromise on. I can compromise on a lot of other things, but that is just the one thing that I can't. So it, I do bring it up pretty early. Um, so, and yeah, cause otherwise I just don't want to like invest all this time and then in emotions and then I have to be like, well, that's not going to work out. Cause I just don't want to go through that in like entire thing again. It's, it was obviously very difficult. So I'd like to nip that in the bud if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's, and, and like you said, like 25% of people out there are not wanting children with that survey. So that, that means that there is a pool of people out there and you shouldn't feel scared to say that because like you said, like you do not want to get that far down the road again and have to deal with that. Final question. What should people not say and not ask you? (laughs) Um, Okay. So we said the, don't say the, um, you'd be a great mom or you'd be a great dad. Cause that just, I I don't think people mean ill by it, but it actually just means it's telling someone that you don't respect their decision and you don't think that they're astute enough to make their own decision. Um, and, uh, you'll obviously don't say you'll regret that. That's the rudest thing you can say to somebody. Um, cause I, and I'm going to start saying that to people who have children and be like, <laughs> you'll regret that. <laughs> you will regret that. Give it, yeah. you know, I think it's a 40 and you are going to regret that. I will only say that to people who say that to me, but, um, <laughs> that's a big one. Um, and oh, there was another one I wanted to say too. Um, oh, so people, often ask, or they, they say with their decision to want to have children, they, they, they'll be like, well, who's going to take care of you when you're older? Um, the thing is, is so my parents, my, my dad's, um, my dad's parents, they were divorced and they both went through, um, very difficult, uh, end of life stuff for like their last two or three years of their life. And they had my family to take care of them because they happen to all live in the same town still. But 90% of the other people that were in these nursing homes with them had visitors, had children, but did not have visitors like basically ever. Um, So just because you have children doesn't mean that they're going to be able to take care of you. I think if I were to have children, I would imagine they would be like me and they'd, you know, go off and live in Australia and Brazil and California. And they're not going to be like, I don't want them to be 
limiting their lives to be able to take care of me. Um, so occasionally once in a while, I worry about that, but then I also remember I'll be better off financially. So I'll be able to afford people to take very good care of me. Boom. Um, so yeah. So don't ask, don't, um, I would say, don't like make that assumption or that question. And, um, yeah, those are probably the big ones. Have you heard anything at, that someone said and you're like, Oh, that's not great. Yeah. I mean, I, I know when you turn 30, like everyone doesn't stop asking when you're going to have kids. And I'd say, stop asking that because it's also, what if someone's trying and they've had a miscarriage or they haven't been successful or in your case, you don't want kids. You're just kind of walking into a very vulnerable zone for someone. So yes. just don't ask, when are you going to have kids? <laughs> that's a really good. Um, that's probably the best one out of all of them, really. That's a really good one. Well, hmm. thank you so much for coming on. And I'm going to, let's go for a drink. I, you're in London. And yeah. you can play tour guide. Yes, yes perfect. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to be a tourist all over again. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. And where can everyone find you? Sure. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, so the name of my YouTube channel and where I am all over all the social media platforms is Love and London, L-O-V-E and London. Um, and then also if you search my name, it's Jessica Dante. So I'm across the internet in various places as well. Nice. Okay. Thanks again. Bye. Thank Jess. you so much. Bye.